Hello, hockey fans. My name is David. Thought I would uh, start this video at uh, 7:51 on the evening of Friday, 16th of December, 2022, North America Easter time. Thought I would do is uh, kind of a little bit of a weekend review, as well as I uh, got some games coming up. You know, there's games coming up on the weekend, uh, Eastern time. Uh, very, uh, it's a important test for uh, each Canadian team coming up, but also in particular, the, you know, the Leafs. It's been a huge, you know, it's been a whirlwind of a week for the Jets. Uh, losing, uh, having their offense go cold, uh, you know, too cold against the Caps earlier in the week. And then a track beat against well, the Golden Knights. Yes, the Golden Knights. Regulation loss by one goal. Wow. In that uh, second game, the Jets kind of threw defense right under the bus. And, well, didn't work too well. And over time, they squeaked through against uh, the Nashville Predators, a divisional rival. Uh, Kyle Connor having come up big a bit over three and a half minutes in. And then there's also a disallowed goal that McDavid would have scored had it not been offside. And, yes, it was uh, kind of losing, you know, losing the control of the puck. And, yeah, that kind of put him offside. So, it's a downer for the Oilers, but still, it's not, you know, I mean, it wasn't fatal getting a point. I mean, it did occur in overtime after all. But what was fatal to the Oilers getting, the Oilers getting two points was, well, a blue lead, a nice giveaway by Darnell Nurse, the so-called nine and a quarter million U.S. dollars per season defenseman, seems to score goals more often than he can effectively defend. But the Oilers don't have a lot of depth on you know defense, and uh, we'll have to see what happens. You know, on last uh, on last night's uh, game over Edmonton live stream, it was uh, by uh, claimed by Zach, one of the co-hosts, that uh, the Oilers should very much be in the running for Arizona Coyotes defenseman Jacob Chikrin. All loads talk about Chikrin, and you know, you know and whether he's going to move. What you know, the Coyotes seem to want a couple first round draft picks. I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, there are those who claim that uh, Sportsnet Oilers analyst Mark Spector is out of his mind to think that, oh, the Oilers don't need Chikrin, they need someone else. You know, it's kind of a truth, you know, kind of maybe somewhere in the middle. The question is, where is the defense? What is Ken Holland, GM, uh, since the 2019 offseason is going to do? Trade deadline this uh, season is a bit earlier. In you know, last season, being kind of like got stood up on their heads because of you know, originally it's supposed to be NHLers were going to be uh, anyone under contract to an NHL team was going to get to go to the Beijing Olympic Games. Then that didn't happen because this uh, Omicron, you know, the original Omicron variant of COVID, kind of, kind of struck Canada and the contiguous United States hard with NHL markets, with states and Canadian provinces of NHL markets not exempt. There were too few that were, and therefore, well, we have some games involving Canadian teams moved from December to other months, and it's crazy, and it was... Uh, so yeah, you know, COVID is not over. It wasn't over then. I don't know if it's over now. I mean, even if uh, even if December is free of any Omicron type hit, that that means that games are postponed. So you know, last season the trade deadline was well into March. With the playoffs, the Stanley Cup playoffs are expected to end sometime, you know, kind of you know late in June and the draft in July at some point. Uh, whereas this season. I believe the draft is in June, and let me see here. The trade deadline is early in March, so basically, teams around the league have, you know, pretty much the rest of this month, next, and in and February, to make deals. I mean, of course, they can go in March, you know, for a couple of days or so, one or two days. But the bottom line is, I mean, the season is supposed to end earlier, you know, mid-April. Is when the regular season is supposed to end. Both seasons expect to begin 
I believe sometime between the 15th and 20th of April Eastern Time. Just how that's going to go, hard to know. There is no Olympic Games, at least Winter Olympic Games, coming up, so that means the NHL does not have to decide this season whether players should players under contract to such teams should get to participate in the Olympic Games. That will be for 2026, for the 2025-26 season, when the Olympic Games will be will be heading over to the north of Italy. Uh, I like to call them Milan Cortina Olympics because of Milan and Corti- Cortina D'Ampezzo being co-hosts of such games. To be determined uh, which hockey teams are going to qualify. But I have a good bet the Canadian, you know, the Canadian adult men's team is going to do so. And the adult women's team, the American teams are going to qualify. Well, the two American teams are going to qualify. And the usual suspects in terms of uh, adult men's teams. And uh, at least on the adult men's side, adult women's side, I don't know. Beyond the Canadian and Americans. Well, the Italian ones will, will definitely qualify because they're co-hosts. Uh, the question is for participation of the Russian and Belarusian men's and women's teams. That's to be determined with the two teams from the former Soviet Union still suspended because, well, the four teams are you know, still spent, suspended due to the, uh, you know, according to the IHF, the involvement of the Russian and Belarusian governments uh, in the invasion of neighboring Ukraine. Latvian men's team probably, you know, maybe there, who knows? But again, basically Canada, United States, Italy, on the men's and women's sides. Uh, for probably some of the other usual suspects among them, at least on the men's side, oh, Sweden, Finland. Uh, here. You know, you have some combo with Sweden, Finland, uh, Czechia, Slovakia, and uh, maybe here. I draw backs. So it's a little bit different in terms of Olympic qualifying than World Championship qualifying. World Championship top division on the men's side. Basically there are sixteen teams that uh, that get to play in the top division and two are relegated. So okay, enough of that. The uh, the Cortina, you know, the Milan Cortina Olympic Games are uh, slightly over three years away, so it's all speculation and gesture which teams are gonna go. Who are the players going to go? Doesn't matter. So, now I'm going to do is go to the games. And before then, go to the standings. So, let's see how he's doing here. So, the Leafs, the, the Leafs end up losing their first game regulation in over a month. But still, pretty, pretty respectably. Oops. Ah. Oops. Alright. There we go here. So, Yeah, Leafs are a dozen points ahead of the Wings, so if the wing, if Leafs can continue to play well, should be a problem. Oh. So yeah, that's it. The Ottawa Senators are still down the bottom, close the bottom here. So yeah, 30 points. They still got a ways to go. Alright, Alright, so, so five points up here, so, you know, the Habs and Senders are 38, 35, and, yeah, so the Habs are kind of, you know, Senders are still quite a bit way back, who knows, these Jets with a win are in a top three divisional spot, so they have uh, 39 points, um, seven up on the Avs. The Oilers are, you know, as they were, one game for the place on this Friday evening. Uh, tied with the, uh, crack, you know, with the Kraken, uh, for terms of points. But again, when it comes to the Pacific Division, it's tight, folks. Calgary Flames. Yeah, they're... It's tight over there, but... Again, problem is that these Flames have been hot and cold. They've lost four games in a row. Uh, three points in those games, but still, that's three out of a possible eight. No good. Flames uh, 
our next going to be next in action uh, slightly over you know I'm sorry slightly after nine Eastern time on Friday evening so now the is gonna go to where would I go to this horse all right so So again, where do I go? So I'm going to do is go to sports dance. And uh, yeah. Oh. He just go. Hmm, so what I'm going to do is to, uh, present the uh, games you know, games to be played on the weekend and on Friday Eastern Time. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to, so we have on the schedule, on this Friday Eastern Time, only one Canadian team in action, the Flames, hosting St. Louis Blues, starting a bit after, well, so your time will be between 9.05 and 9.20 Eastern Time after taking into, taking into account pre-game ceremonies over at the Scotiabank Saddle Dome. So now it's going to go to... Wow, it's going to be a huge slate of games. All, te all Canadian teams, bar the Flames, will be in action at uh, one point or another on Saturday, or at least starting on Saturday Eastern Time. The Canucks, the Jets and Canucks, well... Yeah. No surprise that uh, Kadak Clay, uh, aka uh, Clay Imu, claimed in a video put out hours ago that uh, the Canucks would be retooling for the season, at least for now. I'm, I'm not really surprised because these Canucks are still within striking distance of a playoff spot. We'll have to see what happens as the rest of the season rolls along. The Jets, with their win. With their win over the Nashville Predators, they're probably going to be very... We're going to try to show how determined they are to get that win streak back up to two. Get two wins, and more and more and more and more and more. And the, and the Canucks are going to have to be ready from the Jets' perspective. It's Canucks have, a game, they have won a game after having lost bigly, having to struggle at home. So I'm sure the Canucks are going... You know, the Canucks... I'm sure the Jets are going to have to be aware of that. Canucks very determined to try to hang in the playoff race in the Western Conference. Uh, I mean, after all, they're not in a top three divisional spot, unlike the Jets. And at least a few more games to get up to a top three divisional spot. So, yes, yeah, so yeah, it's. So, yeah, I'm going to do. On Sunday, there are a couple, you know, three games Sens, Jets, and Flames, all, host, all putting together games on the road. So yes, it's um, what I find interesting is that uh, I'm not all surprised that the you know Jets you know Sportsnet shows uh, the Sens and Jets games on Sportsnet now premium. Well, basically means TSN. You know, well, most of the games broadcast on TSN. At least if you want to get the Canadian broadcast, not you know the American ones. You know, whether from Bali, ESPN, uh, ABC. Whatever. He put it there. Flame Sharks. Very unusual that it's on Flame Sharks games on Sportsnet West, but not on any of the other Sportsnet channels. That game could be blacked out. I'll have to see. But I'm definitely going to try to watch that game. So we're just going to do. We're going to go with Saturday here. So the afternoon game, Oilers hosting the Ducks. So yeah, the Flames. Are going to have to watch out for a very determined St. Louis Blues team that came back from a 3 1 deficit to win that game in overtime. Shootout goal by scored by Jordan Cairo. And that turned out to be the difference. The Oilers end up, well, not scoring at any in any shootout. For me, it's just, uh, you know, I, I'm not all surprised. It, shootouts are crapshoots. 
but at least you always got a point. And that really matters here. Flames are, you know, have lost four straight games. That ain't good. Flames are going to have to play a lot better. But will they do that? Who knows? And, uh, yes, when it comes to the, um... Now to go to, before I go, the Leafs. Inevitably, I figured that this uh, multi-game point streak was going to end. It just... The problem is how it ended. And, uh, you know, a uh, tweet from the uh, TSN Hockey... Uh, a video tweet posted on the TSN Hockey Twitter page uh, claimed that the game between the Leafs and Rangers had been a relatively quote, low event, unquote, one. Well, I mean, theorize all he wants, but the main thing is really this, that the, that, I mean, the Leafs, the problem is Leafs end up never really getting going. They tie things up eventually, but never had a lead. And they couldn't, you know, nobody they could figure out how to get pucks past Igor Shesterkin. I'm sick and tired of the excuse, oh, he's oh, got goal lead. The Leafs have to figure out ways to beat hot goalies. Simple as that. If the Leafs are going to win playoff series, that's what they're going to have to do. And it, 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 it thus was no surprise that Justin Bourne co-host of that um, Leafs, Leafs Talk segment on Toronto Sportsnet radio station, The Fan 590, claimed that the that to him, the Leafs' loss to the Rangers on Broadway had felt like a playoff game. Well, yeah. The offense went ice cold. Remember Game 7 of last season's Bolts Leafs playoff series, folks? I do. Leafs scored only one goal. Well, Mike Bunting did increase his point streak, but still, you know, Mitch Barner saw his multi-game point streak broken, but that's not even the worst of it. Is that the Leafs forgot to score goals. They forgot to find ways to beat elite goalies. And to me, that's a problem. And the fault for that lies on GM Dubas, and President Shanahan. To me, the wasted rebuild of President Shanahan, which he started in 2014, has contributed to multiple playoff series defeats. No win of a playoff series whatsoever. To anyone who claims that after this season, Dubas and Shanahan deserve another chance, I say this. Let's see what happens during the 2023 Stanley Cup playoffs. I you know... Both of those execs should have been gone after the embarrassment that was the Leafs Blue Jackets 2020 playoff series held in the Scotiabank Arena bubble in Toronto's downtown. Problem is, they're still here. Will they finally be fired if, they, if the Leafs fail to win a playoff series? We shall see. It's not like either exec has been held accountable even with the contract of Kyle Dubas, up for renewal at the end of the season. Indeed, I have come to expect, when it comes to playoff success, I have come, I have become very disillusioned about whether the Leafs are going to ever win a playoff series with this score. Leafs were up three games to one against the Habs in 2021. And what happened? The Leafs choked. Simple as that. They don't have the players who can win playoff series. They have that killer instinct when it matters. In those tight games. And that's an issue. To me, it's very simple. What Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment, the, the board of MLC, needs to do. If, should the Leafs fail to win a playoff series, it needs to fire Dubas and Shanahan. And replace them with competent executives who understand what it, what the need to put together a quality hockey team and if that means stepping on players toes 
or figurative speaking. So that the so so there's a you know a more you know you know a more a, you know an allocation of 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 cap hit that is you know, that you know that reflects the reality of the salary cap. That is what should happen. Indeed, as much as the regular season has been a very successful one for the Leafs so far, they can't take that for granted. Alex Ovechkin and the Capitals will be hosting the Leafs on Saturday. Will the Leafs be ready? It's going to be broadcast on Hockey Night in Canada, at least on uh, Sportsnet's TV Ontario, West and Pacific Channels. The game that features the Half and Lightning will be hosted and will be uh, broadcast on Sportsnet's East Channel. I probably won't be watching too much of that Habs game because, well, the Leafs will be on. And you know, at least no other teams on, and you'll know, simultaneously the, the, the Habs. And, well, the Habs are in rebuild mode, and who knows what's going to happen. The Leafs have to be ready because the Lightning are on top of the divisional spot. And it could be, it, it may very well be the Leafs end up playing the Lightning. It doesn't, you know, whatever the result of the Habs lighting game is, it's simple. Leafs need to stick to their game. They need to put goals past whoever, whichever goalie uh, Cavs head coach Peter Laviolette decides to use. I believe there's uh, Charlie Lindgren is one of them. I forget who the other one is. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end things on that note. And it is now... 8 to 13 Eastern Time on the evening of Friday, 16th December. I'm definitely looking forward to watching the Flames host the Blues. And I'm going to cheer it on the Leafs, see if they can uh, rebound from being being Shesterkin over on Broadway. I mean, I got, my concern is not a fire alarm fire. Not yet. But again, if things get as bad as they did for the Flames to start off November, then... I'll have you know my concern will 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 elevate, but we'll see what happens with the Leafs against the Capitals. The Leafs did beat the Capitals. Um, just going to see what the records are. Just going to uh, give me a moment here. All right, so uh, all right, all right. We're just going to go and. And then what's going to do is going to go to the. Oh, wait. All right. All right. So we're going to do it. Is uh, oh, okay. Half way lightning TV. They really look it up here, so these are the games the Leafs are playing, and indeed, this is a this is from the Wikipedia article of the Leafs up current season. So it's pretty clear. Just going to look at this here. Just yeah, give me one here. So Leafs have only played one game against Caps. So the upcoming road game, the only game they play at the. At uh, Capital One Arena over in DC, and they play another game on the 29th of January Eastern Time, back at Scotiabank Arena. Last game was barely a win, three-two, uh, thanks to great goaltending by ex-cap Ilya Samsonov. Let's see what handle who starts for Leafs. Likely going to be Murray or Samsonov on Saturday. I don't know what's going to happen, but again. When it comes to uh, you know, Metro Division teams, I mean, the Leafs still have quite a number of games against Metro Division teams. You know, against the uh, Western Conference teams, against Pacific Division one so away. So, okay, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, 16. The Leafs uh, were scheduled to play the season 16 games against. Uh, against the teams in the Pacific. 
and we've already played ten. So there are six left. Four of them on the road. One each against uh, the Flames, Oilers, Kraken, and Canucks. The uh, Kraken in February. Uh, the other three uh, early in March. And then there are two games against different division opponents in uh, at uh, Scotia Bank Arena. One against the Kraken in January, and one in one against the Oilers in March. So when it comes to Central Division opponents, uh, there are more games left. There are 11 games to go against Central Division opponents. Uh, all right, one, two, three, four, five. Five of them away from Scotiabank Arena, the other six at Scotiabank Arena. So, so they've all right, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 11, 11, 15, 19, 26. So, 6 there, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. So, Leafs have 26 games against the Atlanta, against divisional opponents, 24 games against other Eastern Conference teams. Or they did, or at least they were scheduled to, and uh, 32 games scheduled. They were scheduled to play against Western Conference teams. So when it comes to games, these are scheduled to play uh, in Western Conference arenas. They have these are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine games left uh, to play at Western Conference arenas. Uh, that's pretty much it. So, yeah. So Leafs, Leafs in their own time zone uh, will be playing... Or how many games do they have left here? So we have... Uh, okay, 31 games. So, so 31 games Leafs have played. So, right, we have... So in terms of um, 30 games they have left, right, so if they play 30 games, so yeah, okay, 31. So that means Leafs have. Uh, All right, they have 51 games left to play. So of those 51, they only have nine that they have to play outside of their own time zone. It's one of the beauties of being an Eastern Conference team. Play games in their own time zone, well, for the most part. Didn't used to be that way. The Leafs were part of the Western Conference in the 1990s. Or at least what would become the Western Conference. And played in 1989-90. So yeah, the Leafs played eight seasons in the 1990s that ended in the 1990s in what would become the Western Conference, but what was earlier in the decade known as the Campbell Conference. And then it was switched over to what was the Wales Conference, but had by then been renamed the Eastern Conference for the uh, remaining season that was to, that took place in the 90s. And they ended up in the conference final, and ended up losing the Buffalo Sabres in five games, as opposed to seven against the Kings in 1993, and five for the Canucks in 1994. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. It's getting already quite long. And on that note, I'm going to say, go these go.